Hello, my name is Christian and together with my colleague Radu, we are going to introduce you to Oracle Cloud. Let's take a look on how Oracle Cloud is assembled. You can logically separate your resources in compartments, such as production environments, test environments, and other projects. On this slide, you can see an example of segregation by compartments, and you can create hierarchies up to six levels deep. With a 30-day free tier account, you have an amount of credits that you can use to access a wide range of Oracle Cloud services, up to eight instances for you to deploy, and up to five terabits of storage. After this 30 days period, you can use a set of always free resources such as two autonomous databases, two EMD, up to four Ampere virtual machines, and also additional services. Now that we talked about the free resources, let's see how you can play with them. Today we will create two virtual cloud networks and we will connect them together. From the main menu, we will access the virtual cloud networks. First thing to check is to be in the desired compartment. As you can see, I'm in the compartment that I need, and we can start creating the VCN. The wizard will create all the components that we need, a public subnet and an internet gateway attached to it, and a private subnet that will allow resources get updates and patches from the internet through the net, and a service gateway that will allow these resources to connect to the Oracle Services Network. Let's create the VCN. Let's name this VCN, I'm gonna call it VCN1. The compartment is the right one. And now we have to configure the VCN CIDR block and the subnets. For this first VCN, we will let the default values and we're gonna go with next. In this page, you will see what this wizard is creating, the VCN, the subnets, the gateways, the security list, and the route tables. In the route tables, we attach the gateways to our subnets and with security list, we will create a whitelist with IPs and ports that will have access to our subnets. Now the last step is to create the network. And the network is created. Now we can access it. We can create the local peering gateway so we can connect the two VCNs together. We go with create local peering gateway. We will call it LPG1 and we go with create. Now we are gonna create the secondary VCN with the same process, but with a different CIDR block so they will not have a conflict. Now we're going to create a local peering gateway also here called LPG2 and with this LPG we will establish the peering connection. We search for the VCN1 and we search for the peering gateway from the other side and we go with establish peering connection. Now the connection is ready and we can see these networks on the network visualizer. And this is the network infrastructure that we just created. If you have more VCNs, you can arrange them the way you want and also click on the components and find details about them. Now that we have the network in place, let's play with another free resource. Let's create a virtual machine. From the main menu, under Compute, we will access the instances. Here we can start creating the instance. We will name it Instance1. The compartment is well selected. The placement will be automatically selected. Then you can configure the image and shape. Under images, you'll find different images like Oracle Linux, Autonomous Linux, Windows, and others, and also choosing the vendor that will give you the processing power. In this case, I'm gonna to stick to the default one and we're gonna use a 10 CPU of EMD. Then we select the network and we will create it under the VCN1 and under the public subnet because we want to connect to that machine. 
Next step, because it's a Linux machine, is to have a pair of keys. In this case, I'm gonna generate a pair of keys straight from the console, so I'm gonna save the private key and the public key. Then I'm gonna upload the public key that I had just downloaded. And we can proceed with create. Now the machine will be provisioning and that will take up to three minutes. Now the machine is provisioned and you can find all the details on the general information page. Now all is left is to connect to that machine. In order to do that, we will open a command prompt. We will navigate to the folder where the private key is located and we will SSH to that machine. So SSH minus I, we copy the name of the private key. This is this one. I'm going to also use the extension and then we will copy the username and the public IP address. So OPC at it will ask us if we want to continue connecting and we say yes. Now, as you can see, now we are connected to the instance one. Keep in mind that we are allowed to connect to that virtual machine from our personal computer because by default, the security list created by the VCN wizard will allow all IP addresses to connect to the public subnet. All right. Now, my colleague Christy will showcase an autonomous database. Uh, thank you, Rado. Now let's jump right into that. The autonomous database provides a complete and easy to use platform for database applications. The following demo will introduce how to provision a database which is optimized for data warehousing workloads. We will also explore the provided sample datasets that come with your Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. Once you log in, you arrive at the Cloud Services dashboard where you can see all the services available to you. Click the navigation menu in the upper left to show top level navigation choices and then click Oracle Database category and then click Autonomous Database. Click Create Autonomous Database to start the instance creation process. This brings up the Create Autonomous Database screen where you will specify the configuration of the instance. You will need to give basic information for the autonomous database. First, we will need to choose a compartment where you can simply use the default compartment or pick a different one. Then, we will need to add a display name and we are going to use demo underscore ADW. Then, we need to choose a database name and we can go with demo ADW. Choose the data warehouse workload type, then Choose the shared infrastructure deployment type. All right, now let's configure the database. If your cloud account is an always free account, you can select this option here to create an always free autonomous database. An always free autonomous database comes with one OCPU and 20 gigabytes of storage. For this demo, we are going to leave the always free option unchecked since we are going to use the remain credits in our free trial account. Now we will choose the database version 19C, the number of OCPUs that we want our instance to have. We can leave the OCPU auto scaling option enabled. This will enable the system to automatically use up to three times more CPU and input output resources to meet the workload demand. Select your storage capacity in terabytes. For this demo, we are going to specify one terabyte of storage. Then we will need to specify the password for the admin user. Now you will need to choose the license included to subscribe to a new Oracle database software license and the Oracle database service. Now that your database is configured, click on create autonomous database. Your instance will begin provisioning and in a few moments the state will turn from provisioning to available. Now your autonomous database is ready to be used. Multiple regions are located in different geographical places all around the world. Those regions have one or multiple data centers called availability domains. These availability domains are constructed from multiple fault domains. Each fault domain has multiple internet providers and individual power supply. Regions will allow you create disaster recovery scenarios, 
Availability domain will help you create high availability scenarios and fault domains will help you create a fault tolerant environment.